In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My dear friends, throughout the Church Universal today, we celebrate the feast of St. Padre Pio as we ordain Stephen Douglas Parks as the 15th Bishop of the Diocese of Savannah. It is with great joy that I welcome you here in this stunning Catholic uh, Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist and those who are viewing through live stream. Thank you for joining us for this wonderful celebration of this local church. As we begin to prepare ourselves to enter into the mystery of God's love for us, let us pause and ask the Lord to grant us forgiveness from our sins. Most Reverend Father, the Church of Savannah asks you to ordain this priest, Stephen Douglas, to the responsibility of the episcopate. Do you have a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Your Excellency, Metropolitan Archbishop Hartmeyer, Your Excellency Bishop Boland, Bishop Emeritus of Savannah, Bishop-elect Stephen Parks, my brother Archbishops and Bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful of the Church in Savannah and all those joining through live streaming, television and radio. I am pleased to be here in this beautiful cathedral in honor of St. John the Baptist, who pointed out Jesus as the Lamb of God. Archbishop Hartmeyer shepherded this historic see before his elevation to Metropolitan Archbishop, and we are grateful for his service. I think it's good. Thank you. It's the last time you will come in like that, you know. So <laughs> he still deserves an applause for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This diocese, which has a rich history dating back to the Franciscan missionaries, some of whom shed their blood, which subsequently nourished the faith in this territory, will now be handed over to you. Give it a shepherd care. Today is the feast of Padre Pio, you said it, whose marvelous work at San Giovanni Rotondo brought about numerous conversions and healings. Padre Pio is reported to have said, always live under the eyes of the Good Shepherd and you will always walk unharmed through evil pastures. Although I am confident that these pastures are not so evil here in Savannah, Padre Pio gives good advice to the new shepherd that the Holy Father has appointed for the Diocese of Savannah. Always live under the eyes of the Good Shepherd. Your Excellency Bishop Elec Parks, I suppose you and your brother Bishop Gregory Parks grew up not only under the watchful eye of Christ, the Good Shepherd, but under the loving care of your parents. You have already lived your priesthood in a distinguished way in the service of the Diocese of Orlando. You will be particularly missed not only by Bishop Noonan, I greet you, Bishop, here, and your brother priests, but also by your flock in Annunciation in Longwood. You are now asked to watch over, guard, protect, and nourish this beloved family of faith in Savannah. As the new shepherd of this flock, I place before you the words of the Holy Father. I quote, A shepherd after the heart of God has a heart sufficiently free to set aside his own concerns. He does not live by calculating his gains 
or how long he has worked. He is not an accountant of the spirit, but a good Samaritan who seeks out those in need. For the flock, he is a shepherd, not an inspector. And he, and he devotes himself to the mission not 50 or 60 percent, but with all he has. In seeking, he finds, and he finds because he takes risks. Unless a shepherd risks, he does not find. He does not stop when disappointed, or he does not yield to weariness. Indeed, he is stubborn in his good. I like that. <laughs> Anointed with the divine obstinacy that loses sight of no one. I don't know if you like this quotation. <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> Should I repeat it? No. My brother, the Holy Father is asking you to be close to the people of Savannah by taking risks for them and by being stubborn in doing good. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Pietro of Pietrelcina, Saint John the Baptist and your own patron, Saint Stephen, the Proto-Martyr, intercede for you and strengthen you as you begin your Episcopal ministry. And now, with great joy, I will read the translation of the Apostolic Letter of Appointment. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to our beloved son, Stephen P Parks, from the clergy of the Diocese of Orlando and up to now, Vicar Foran, there as well as pastor of Annunciation Parish in Altamonte Springs, appointed Bishop of Savannah, greetings and apostolic blessing. As they conform, conform themselves to Christ, who is the shepherd and guardians of souls, Faithful ordinaries have the ability to show clearly to the world his countenance. For this reason, we, who have been placed in the office of Blessed Peter, earnestly endeavor to appoint bishops of this kind for each of the local churches. And so, at this time, we turn our thoughts to the Sea of Savannah, which currently stands in need of its own chief shepherd, owing to the transfer of our venerable brother Gregory John Hartmeyer, a member of the Order of Friars Minor Conventual, to the Archdiocese of Atlanta. Indeed, you, beloved son, who are endowed with the requisite virtues and qualities, and who, until now, have diligently fulfilled various responsibilities, showing clearly a love for Christ and his Church, are, in our judgment, suitable for undertaking the Episcopal office. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic power and authority, we appoint you Bishop of Savannah, granting to you the due rights and imposing the relative obligations which are connected with this mandate, in accordance with the Code of Canon Law. Prior to Episcopal ordination, which you may receive from a Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome, the liturgical norms being observed, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors according to the laws of, of the Church. In addition, you will inform the clergy and the people of your diocese about your appointment and we earnestly exhort them to receive you warmly. You heard that, isn't it? <laughs> as you come among as their new ordinary and to comply with you willingly. Through the prayerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of the Apostles, may Almighty God watch over you with his protection granting that you may do well here in your new ministry and rejoice always at home with the hope of eternal glory. Given at Rome at the Lateran on the eighth day of the month of July in the year of the Lord 2020, the eighth of our pontificate. And it is signed, Francis.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest, St. Pius, a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lectura del libro del profeta Jeremías. En tiempo de Josías, el Señor me dirigió estas palabras. Desde antes de formarte en el seno materno, te conozco. Desde antes de que nacieras, te consagré como profeta para las naciones. Yo le contesté, pero Señor mío, yo no sé expresarme, porque apenas soy un muchacho. El Señor me dijo, No digas que eres un muchacho, pues irás a donde yo te envíe y dirás lo que yo te mande. No tengas miedo, porque yo estoy contigo para protegerte, palabra del Señor. 
El Señor extendió entonces su brazo, con su mano me tocó la boca y me dijo, Desde hoy pongo mis palabras en tu boca. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also must I lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Christ, it is my honor to be here as the former Bishop of Savannah and now as the seventh Metropolitan Archbishop of Atlanta and to ordain Bishop-elect Stephen Douglas Parks as the 15th Bishop of Savannah. Your Excellency, Archbishop Pierre, we are so very blessed to have you with us today as the personal representative of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Your being here is a vivid reminder of what we are aware of every time we come to the Eucharist, that we are in communion with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and through him, the Catholic Church throughout the world. Excellency, you are most, we are most grateful for your presence here today. Archbishop Pierre has had a year of celebration himself as he commemorated his 50th anniversary as a priest and 25 years as a bishop this year. Archbishop Pierre, Archbishop, please accept our heartfelt gratitude for these many years of faithful service to the people of God all over the world, especially here in the United States. Congratulations, ad multos anos. It is also important to note that Bishop-elect Stephen Parks and Bishop Gregory Parks are brothers. Bishop Gregory Parks is the Bishop 
of the Diocese of St. Petersburg in Florida. And at six feet, eight inches, he is probably the tallest bishop in the world. <laughs> it is also significant to mention that the Parks brothers are the 11th set of brothers to become bishops in the history of the church in the United States. The last set of brothers before the Parks to become bishops were the Bolin brothers. Bishop Kevin Bolin was the 13th Bishop of Savannah, and his late brother, Raymond Boland, was the fourth Bishop of Kansas City in St. Joseph, Missouri. And so there is a lot of history being made today. We are honored to have Bishop J. Kevin Bolin, Bishop Emeritus, here with us today as he witnesses the ordination of his second successor, Stephen. You are the first priest that I will ordain to the Episcopacy. It is a first that I will not forget. I do not know what your parents had in mind when they named you Stephen, but Saint Stephen was a deacon in the early church and is known as the first martyr of the church. He was stoned to death outside the walls of Jerusalem in his defense of his faith as a disciple of Christ. His tragic and public death occurred just three years after the death of Jesus. His final words were a prayer for forgiveness for his attackers. What a prophetic significance for you to have the same name as you begin your ministry as the Bishop of Savannah during the time of racism and prejudice and a longing for social justice in our country. And you deliberately chose to be ordained a bishop on this date, the Feast of Padre Pio, a recent saint who was beatified and canonized by Pope St. John Paul II. This Capuchin Franciscan friar died on this date in 1968, just two years before you were born. Padre Pio was a friar priest who had become best known for exhibiting the stigmata, the three nail wounds of the crucified Jesus for more than 50 years of his life. His funeral mass was attended by 100,000 people. Saint Padre Pio often said, my real mission will begin after my death. Stephen, I believe that you chose to be ordained on the feast of a saint whose intercession you can count on. The theme of the Good Shepherd lies at the heart of today's gospel. There is no image more captivating in all of the gospels, so demanding in its utter surrender of self to the good of God's people, so human in its expression of a care which is permanent, nurturing, and protective, so individuals in its expression of divine love as the care of the Father who has known us from the first moment in our mother's womb and will love us until the end of time. You, in your priesthood, Stephen, have loved like such a shepherd, proclaiming with an evangelical zeal the gospel of Jesus Christ in all of its intensity and fullness and encasing that proclamation in the tender, intimate love that permeated the teaching of Christ himself. You have taken to heart the pastoral conviction that mercy is the primary attribute of Jesus in his relationship with humanity, and you have labored to transform your former assignments in the Di Diocese of Orlando into faith communities 
that will rejoice in the Lord always, which is your Episcopal motto taken from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. To rejoice in the Lord always is the pastoral orientation which has been both at the heart of the history of this local church and at the heart of your priestly life. That gives me the greatest joy in ordaining you to the Episcopacy this day. The Diocese of Savannah is a mission diocese that has always drawn strength and identity from the waves of men and women who have come to this place seeking to build a new life, including Father Pedro Martinez, a Jesuit who became the first Georgia martyr and was killed on Cumberland Island in 1566. The Franciscan Georgia martyrs from Spain arrived shortly after in the evangelization of Georgia and the five friars were also martyred along the coast of Georgia in 1595. The six Mercy Sisters arrived from Charleston in 1845 and opened St. Vincent Academy. The Irish and immigrants from Europe, South America, and Africa formed a mission diocese born of the Diocese of Charleston in 1850. Stephen, as I ordain you a bishop today, we stand in a moment of societal crisis. The pandemic has worn us down and made us fearful of the way forward. Our sisters and brothers are facing immense, immense suffering as they are plunged once again into the agony of suspending public life. Racial turmoil rends our nation and demands that we confront our long history of racial and ethnic prejudice. It would be a mistake for this local church to see these challenges as temporary or as limited in their implication for the life of the church in the Diocese of Savannah. The pandemic has transformed the landscape of our ecclesial life in ways that will permanently change the nature of pastoral action and evangelization. Patterns of parish life that have sustained community and the proclamation of the gospel for decades has been ruptured by the isolation of these last seven months. There is a danger that the pandemic is creating a culture of increased disengagement within the life of the church that will persist long after a vaccination is found. As we face the racial, ethnic, and class divisions that have engulfed our nation and afflicted our church, we can find guidance in the central concept that guided a parasida on the issue of solidarity, the concept of exclusion. The Latin American church recognized that the historic theological term of marginalization did not capture the totality of the experience of alienation within the church and society. Attacks upon solidarity do not merely displace people in society and church. They exclude them entirely from meaningful participation. Exclusion is a reality in which issues of race, class, and power merge. If we are to build a true solidarity within the community of the church and our nation, we must recognize the sinfulness that lies in all the structures and actions of exclusion and exclusivity. In banishing that sinfulness, we move toward justice 
and we heal ourselves. My brother Stephen, there is no more important work for the church in the coming months than consoling those who have been broken and bring to our world the understanding that God provides the only enduring foundation for the journey of life on this earth. In the words of Aparasita, those who enjoy life most are those who leave security on the shore and become excited about the mission of communicating life to others. As people of faith, all of us must become comfortable with leaving security on the shores rather than seeking to create it through the prism of the cultural norms that suffocate us and our world. Stephen, today, as the 15th Bishop of Savannah, you leave security on the shore. You come among us as a loving shepherd, a man of sustained faith, one who can lead this mission diocese and who can help bring a solidarity among God's people so that all can rejoice in the Lord always. May the Lord grant you his peace. Amen.
Stephen, the ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, dear brother, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of our hands? I do. Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in the unity of that body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need? I do. Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dearly beloved, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the church will grant an abundance of his grace to this chosen one. Please kneel. Mary Mar 
create this chosen man. Glory be unto you, Lord. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Glory be unto you, Lord. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Glory be unto you, Lord. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace through Christ our Lord.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who lay down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation of the just, born of Abraham, who established rulers and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers. And so, from the foundation of the world, we were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Pour out now upon this chosen one the power which is from you, the governing spirit, whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock. Serving you night and day, may he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrance, a fragrant offering to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever and ever. Amen. May God, who made you a share of the high priesthood of Christ himself, pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings.
Stephen received the gospel and preached the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Stephen received this ring, the ring of the first Bishop of Savannah, Bishop Francis Gartland, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Stephen received this mitre, and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfailing crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of the Holy Church. We offer you this sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service to you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, high priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Do you, therefore, mo most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls. 
in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray to graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for me, your unworthy servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in me, so that what I have received by divine commission I may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge one another with a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift, and that is why we call it the present. This oft-quoted phrase expresses my sentiments on the day of my ordination as the 15th Bishop of the Diocese of Savannah. First, there is history. Here in this beautiful Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist, which, by the way, is sometimes referred to as the Sistine of the South, we are surrounded by artwork and images of our ancestors in faith. This magnificent house, built on solid rock, stands as a reminder of the deep roots of the Catholic faith in South Georgia. The ring that was presented to me today belonged, as Archbishop mentioned, to Bishop Francis Gartland, the first bishop of Savannah installed in 1850. I am humbled to think of him and all 14 of my predecessors who, along with their brother priests, toiled in this rich and fertile soil to plant seeds of faith. I realize that I am called not to fill their shoes, for that is not possible, but rather to stand on their shoulders so that together with our presbyterate today, we move forward with hope and trust in God. Secondly, today is a gift for which I am very grateful. I express my appreciation to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the confidence that he has placed in me. I would like to thank Archbishop Christophe Pierre for traveling here to represent His Holiness. Thank you, Archbishop Hartmeyer, for serving as the principal consecrator for my Episcopal ordination. On behalf of the priests and faithful of our diocese, we are grateful for your nine years of ministry here and hope that you will always know that you have a home here in Savannah. I look forward to working with you and the other bishops of our province. Bishop Boland, you traveled across the Atlantic 61 years ago as a missionary from County Cork in Ireland to serve the people of God here in Georgia. 25 years ago, you took your seat here in this cathedra. Today, I thank you for your friendship and look forward to learning from you and receiving the benefit of your wisdom and experience. Many bishops have traveled from around the Southeast to be with us for this celebration. Please know of my gratitude for your efforts. I especially thank Archbishop Wenske and Bishop Noonan, both of whom I had the privilege of working with you have provided me with an inspiring example of being a shepherd, along with the priests, sisters, and faithful of the Diocese of Orlando, and have helped me to be the priest and now bishop that God has called me to be. Over these past 22 years, I have been very blessed in my assignments at Annunciation, Most Precious Blood, and Catholic campus ministry at the University of Central Florida. I've learned a lot from my experiences in parish and campus ministry. I have a lot more still to learn. But please know of my appreciation for your love, support, and continued prayers. As Shakespeare wrote in the play, The Twelfth Night, thanks, thanks, and forever thanks. The wonder of modern technology has also allowed us to pray via a live stream. Your presence and prayers from afar are greatly appreciated as you have been an integral part of our celebration. Since the an announcement of my appointment in early July, much planning has taken place 
to prepare for today. The ordination committee and staff of the Pastoral Center have worked tirelessly. I want you to know that I am grateful to you, the musicians, the liturgical ministers of the diocese, Father Jerry Schreck, and the staff here at the Cathedral Basilica for your efforts in creating a celebration that is now permanently engraved in our memory. The sharing of your gifts and talents is a true blessing. I also want to thank Father Daniel Furman for serving as the diocesan administrator these past months. Along with the College of Consultors, you have led our diocese in this time of transition. I am grateful to you, the priests, and all who have warmly welcomed me here. You have truly shown Southern hospitality to me and to our visitors. And of course, I want to recognize and express my gratitude to my family, those present who have journeyed from various parts of our country, and those who were not able to travel at this particular time. My parents, Joan and Ronald, ensured that our Catholic faith was an important part of our home growing up. Although they, along with my brother Christopher, passed away and are not here physically, I feel their presence and prayers and can only think that they are with us today and have the best seat in the house. I'm especially grateful to you, Greg, for the model of brotherhood that you have shown me, not only as my big brother and sibling, but as a brother priest and now as a brother bishop. I have always looked up to you physically, obviously, <laughs> but also admire your example, your witness of faith, your service to the church, and I assure you that you will always be the highest priest in our family. <laughs> and finally, tomorrow is a mystery. As we have celebrated on the memorial of St. Pius of Pietrelcina, or Padre Pio as he is commonly known, we can all be reminded of his simple words, pray, hope, and don't worry something that is easier said than done. But there is great wisdom contained in this expression. St. Pio lived an extraordinary life, and he was a, a rather eclectic character. He knew the power of God's presence in joy and suffering, and his inspiration, his, his priesthood, and his ministry is an inspiration to me and my brother priests and bishops as he marveled at the beauty of the Eucharist, was devoted to the Blessed Mother, served the people of God selflessly, and was an instrument of incredible mercy. Yes, tomorrow is a mystery, but in, with the, through the intercession of Saint Pio, I pray that I may have the strength and energy to do my best and to do my part to know, love, and serve God by loving and serving others. I look forward to traveling to all corners of our beautiful and diverse diocese, getting to know the priests, deacons, sisters, seminarians, and faithful, working with you in the vineyard of the Lord, praying with you, and sharing our hopes and dreams so that with God's help, and our trust in his providence, they may become reality. Aqueos que hablan español, me gustaría agradecerlos por estar conmigo hoy, ya que soy ordenado e instalado como el quincuagésimo obispo de Savannah. Nuestra diócesis es grande en tamaño y diversa en cultura. Espero poder conocerte servirte y ministrar juntos para que podamos crecer en fe, esperanza y amor. Por favor, susurra mi nombre a Dios para que pueda ser el pastor que necesitan y merecen. 
Gracias por sus oraciones y sepan que los recordaré a ustedes, a sus familias y sus intenciones en mi conversación diaria con Dios. Today, I am thankful to God for his presence and for knowing that he is near. I ask for your prayers each day. As an aside, if you simply pray to God for Bishop Parks, you now get a two for one. <laughs> Please whisper my name to the Almighty so that I can be the shepherd that our diocese and the church needs and deserves. Be assured of my prayers for you, your loved ones, and your intentions. We may not see each other each day, but may we each meet each day in our prayers, and may we rejoice in the Lord always. After the final blessing, I ask all of our guests to please remain seated in the cathedral. Photos of all the clergy will be taken outside at the steps of the cathedral. And once the picture is completed, the ushers will assist you in departing from the cathedral basilica. The reception is at the DeSoto Hotel where many of you are staying. It's only two blocks away down Liberty Street. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. O God, who care for your people with mercy and rule them with love, give the spirit of wisdom to those you have charged with the duty of governing, that from the growth of a holy flock, eternal joy may come to the shepherds. In your majestic power, you allot us the number of our days and the measure of our years. Look graciously upon our humble service and confer on our time the full abundance of your peace. Amen. Through your grace, bring to completion the gifts you have conferred upon me and having raised me to the rank of bishop, make me pleasing to you in the fulfillment of my duties. Guide the hearts of people and bishop in such measure that the shepherd may never be without the obedience of the flock, nor the flock without the care of the shepherd. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.